It's a pleasure to be back here with you sisters for this week, uh, the second week of Lent. Uh, we have readings from the prophet Daniel in the lesson, and then a, a can be confusing reading from John chapter 8, uh, where our Lord is, is going back and forth with the Pharisees. Uh, so it, it is good, it'll be good this week to maybe keep in mind the theme from Sunday. Uh, Sunday's gospel was the transfiguration, and that is our, we could say our goal, is to be transfigured by God's grace, by accepting God's mercy, uh, to be uh, uh, transfigured from what we are into something more, right, something glorious. And we should also, though, we should contrast this with what has happened to us and what does happen to us with sin. Uh, we are transfigured by grace, but disfigured by sin. And that, that's the dichotomy, right? That, that is the, the interplay that is our constant lot on this earth, the flesh lusting against the spirit. And, uh, and this is what, you know, in, in, in the gospel, this is what the Jews have a hard time accepting in that they, we are disfigured by sin. And despite our best efforts, uh, we can't raise ourselves out of that, right? We're, we're not going to be able to accomplish that on our own. And that was perhaps the, the uh, continuing problem with the Pharisees. They, they wanted to be uh, saved, right? They, they wanted to do God's will. They wanted to fulfill the law, uh, but they wanted it in the wrong way. It's almost like they wanted to do it themselves. And they wanted to show up on God's doorstep and say, see God, uh, here we are. Here's the law. We fulfilled it perfectly. We were fantastic. We were great. Aren't you proud of us? Aren't you happy? Now, now let us in. And, and that's never how it happened. It's not the case. Um, <clears throat> the, the proper attitude is to take the attitude of Daniel uh, from the lesson. Uh, and he and this is Daniel and, and just this is Daniel chapter 9 and previously he was thrown in the lion's den and miraculously delivered he was placed third in the kingdom of uh, the Belteshar um, he was uh, made uh, a, a great prince by um, uh, Darius uh, and so he had every reason to think that he, he was um, uh, capable he was competent he had not sinned he was blameless before the Lord <clears throat> but when he prays he says Lord, we have sinned in your sight. We are justly punished for your afflictions. And this has been the, the, the theme all of last week as well. Uh, the, the, the term today they call, um, they say, extreme ownership, which is don't make excuses, don't blame other people. If, if, if um, there, there's some kind of unpleasant circumstance, and maybe you didn't, maybe it's not entirely your fault, take ownership, accept it, and say, okay, maybe I didn't do all of this, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not the best either. And I do have my own sins, and this very well could have been me. You know, had, had circumstances been reversed, had I been in somebody else's shoes, who knows if I would have done better. It, it doesn't matter. This is the case right now, and this is what we have, and this is what I'm going to accept. Right? That, that is ownership, and that is what Daniel does. We have sinned, we have transgressed thy law, we are justly punished for our sins and the sins of our fathers. And he doesn't sugarcoat it either. He doesn't try to defend or protect and say, oh, everybody who came before us is wonderful. He doesn't do that. He says, yeah, they have problems. They sinned. But we have sinned too. But he doesn't blame them. He doesn't praise them. He just accepts reality for what it is, accepts truth, and he moves forward from there. And what does he say? Show us thy mercy, not on any righteousness of our own, but because of the multitude of thy mercies. That is why God uh, uh, saves us. That is why God redeems is because he is merciful, not because we are just. Uh, now, now St. Augustine uh, says in the, his commentary on today's gospel that our Lord says to the Jews, uh, you shall seek me and you, you shall not find me and where I go you cannot come. And like, what, what does he mean by this? You know, you shall seek me and uh, is he going to kill himself? And th it is a little bit true there. Like he was going to, to die. He was going to enter death. But after that, he was going to enter the kingdom of his father. And this is what he means when he says, you cannot come. You cannot enter into that kingdom, the, 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 the blessed kingdom of heaven, because you are not going to repent. You are going to die in your sins unrepented. Augustine notes that um, uh, Christ says this to his apostles, where I go, you cannot come. But he doesn't say, you shall die in your sins. And the meaning there, as St. Augustine uh, points out, <coughs> is you cannot come yet. You cannot come right now. But he, because he didn't say, you will die in your sins, it's implied that you cannot come now, but you will later. Uh, because the apostles love Christ, and, 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 and where Christ goes, the apostles seek him because they want to be with him, as opposed to the Jews who seek Christ, right? You will seek me, and you shall not find me. 
uh, they'll seek him because they want to destroy him, because they want to uh, prove him wrong, because they want to um, eliminate the, the competition that, that they have. Uh, so that, that is um, the great lesson there, is that it is possible to seek Christ for the wrong reasons. It's possible to be going to Mass and to be, to be belonging to the, the uh, true religion, as the Jews were at that time, for the wrong reasons and in the wrong way. And that's a very good lesson for us. It's not enough for, for, enough for us to do the right thing or even to seek Christ. If we seek Christ uh, because it makes me feel good as opposed to making me actually good, that's a problem. You know, if, if I seek Christ uh, because I want to look good, that's a problem. Uh, so we have to really examine that. Right? It is, we can't rest and say, well, I'm doing the right thing or God commanded this and I'm doing that. Why are you doing that? Right? Why are we doing what we're doing? What's our motives and what's our reasons? Uh, so we have to be very, very honest with ourselves about that. And Christ says, you know, I have much to condemn, speaking to the Pharisees. I have much to condemn, much to speak. But what does he speak? I speak uh, what I learned from my Father, uh, and that is truth, right? And he is true. He is truth itself, and that is what I speak in the world. You know, Christ could have condemned, I mean, he did, actually, but he spoke more than he condemned, right, the Pharisees. Uh, he spoke the truth. And, and speaking truth... Uh, has a way of condemning, right? Simply just by stating the truth, that itself condemns uh, because it's contrasted with my behavior, right? My duplicity. And, and that's why evil can't stand the truth even being spoken. It's just when it is, uh, you, you tend to see it. You see evil for what it is, uh, we see truth for what it is. Uh, so let us do that, right? Let us ask Christ to have the courage to accept the truth that he speaks in the world. And if that truth condemns my behavior, let me accept it, right? Let, let me accept that, that, that maybe my motives aren't good or my behavior is not good, uh, but recalling the lesson of Daniel, it is not by my righteousness uh, that I am saved, but by God's tender mercies. And it is not by my wickedness that I am condemned, uh, but by my wickedness that I am forgiven, right, if I ask for forgiveness. Uh, so let us recall that, you know, we have been disfigured by sin. Let us resolve to cease, right, cease sinning, uh, not disfigure our souls anymore but allow ourselves to be transfigured by the grace and the mercy, especially that mercy of Christ, which comes when we are honest and we are humble. We admit what we are and who God is, and we would receive healing and forgiveness, and then we can follow Christ. We will not die in our sins. We will die having been transfigured by his grace. God bless you, sisters, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.